How's it going, PBO people? It's Ben, back again for another uh, edition of PBO Pick'ems. Going into week four, I'm here with the Syracuse Snorlax. Hello. And we are getting right into it. Let's go. The Frederick Clef Keys versus the Nevada County Caterpies. All right, so this is a pretty uh, pretty interesting matchup, in my opinion. The um, the Volcanion is in Iron Hands now. Is that true? Big facts. Oh, oh my God. Okay, uh, pause, 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 pause. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I forgot right. there was uh, from last week. From last week. Is the Registeel a Murkrow, or is it the other way around? It's a uh, Registeel, if I'm remembering correctly. Or no, it's Murkrow. It I was going to say, is the doc updated? It is, it is, it All is. Right. It, it was just okay. the overlapping, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yep. All right. So, uh, looking at this matchup that I'm seeing on my screen, uh, it does look like, you know, Volcanion has a pretty decent matchup here for at least heading off Hydro Steams and, you know, Steam Eruptions. The resist to both is Quillfish. I don't know if Quillfish wants to take both of those hits. But on the other side, uh, Iron Valiant, you know, some uh, speed boosting, either that Scarf or Boost Booster Speed to outspeed Pult and uh, Darkrai, that could be very, very dangerous. Of course, you gotta pay attention to the bullet punches from Scizor. The Scizor bullet punches could honestly be very big just for picking off Zerud potentially, or picking off uh, Valiant, or picking off uh, Speed. But obviously there's some good resists in Quillfish and the Talonflame. The, um... Hazard removal on Caterpie's side is somewhat lacking in the sense that it's like, you know, either Avalug or uh, Hitmonlee that are clicking Rapid Spin. I think Scizor might have Defog too, but I don't know if you want to click that. So I'm wondering if Quillfish could come, both as like a semi-Hitmonlee, Rillaboom, and also Scizor answer, while also carrying the T-Spikes, since there is no grounded poison on the opposite side other than Terror and their Hitmonlee. Um... Potentially, uh, Orange, in order to stop the Scizor, could set up Psychic Terrain with his Ndidi. That could be an interesting play that might make Caterpies not want to bring the Scizor. But then, uh, uh, if that's the case, the Iron Valiant will have a, a much freer reign to kind of just click Moonblasts if Scizor doesn't come. You know, Moonblast, the only resist then would be Volcanion. I don't know how much you want Volcanion taking that chip. Um... In terms of, like, offensive pressure from the Caterpies, like I said, Volcanion is quite good. Um, if Hitmonlee can be Terra Electric and get off a of Sword Stance in the terrain, it could perhaps uh, be very scary. The Terra Blast Electric, plus the fighting coverage and potentially a Poison Jab, uh, it seems very, very difficult for, for uh, Klefkis to deal with, other than maybe um, Garchomp being able to take a hit, but, you know, you just need Garchomp whittled a little bit for, like, a CC to kill at plus two. Uh, the Quillfish could potentially intimidate, though, so there is that. I'm wondering if maybe Pult will be screened to try and deal with the immediate pressure that Clefkis is going to put on with their team. Uh, what are you thinking, Syracuse? Um, I'm thinking this matchup is all about who can get established pressure the fastest. I feel like, like you said earlier, Quillfish, he, he, you don't want to bring Quillfish, but you honestly might have to into um, this kind of team. But I feel like whatever, the first two or three turns of this match will de probably determine the outcome just because how much pressure both sides want to implement. And as soon as they fall behind, it's going to be rough on both sides. I mean, like you said, uh, Klefkis doesn't really have an answer for, like, Volcanion. Um, Hitmonlee can be on there, Scizor, but then... It might uh, be Water Belly Bolt just to deal with Volcanion. I could see that. I could I could see that as well. Um, but then on the other side, you know, Valiant, Deoxys, Zarude, um, you know, Caterpies is going to, obviously, between th those three being a strong offensive core it's it's going to be mostly a pressure matchup so um basically whatever their openers are i see being the keyest factor here yeah i agree i think like a scale shot dragonite or not dragonite sorry a garchomp could also be very dangerous for the caterpies if he's like scale shot sword stance with poison move and uh ground move that could be really really dangerous for caterpies uh, to deal with. He doesn't have, like, a, a super amazing checks. It, it might be Avalog that comes. I think Zarude doesn't even need to be Terra this ga game. Uh, it could be Scarf with, like, U-turn and knockoff and stuff. I think Setup, we probably won't win the game for you. 
I think uh, Terra Water Belly Bolt might be might be the play, and I think Caterpie should try to be Terra. Their Hitmonlee Electric, I think, is their play. That puts on a lot of pressure. So uh, that, that's my opinion on the match. I'm going to lean 60-40 in favor of the Frederick Klefkies. What are you thinking, Syracuse? Um, I'm going to lean. I'm going to lean actually the opposite. I'll do a 40-60 in favor of Caterpies. I think Caterpies might do the upset here. All right, and with that. We will move on to the next game. And the game of the week. The Vancouver Valiants versus the Sunnyside Suikins. I didn't know this got game of the week. All right. So this is a very interesting one because Vancouver has a lot of setup and Sunnyside is very fat but without unaware. I think that makes it so Sunnyside is going to have to play really well to not get pressured really, really hard by all the potential setup mons that Vancouver has. Um, I will say, you know, there's some decent checks, like Corviknight is okay for Enamorous. You know, Ting Lu is really, really hard to take down, but Vancouver does have, like, Great Tusk and Greninja who can, like, you know, chip it, and Great Tusk, you know, can sit there and just go for fighting move, and, you know, Ting Lu will Earthquake, but it won't kill. So, you know, that's a good exchange for Valiance in the long run. Uh, Cinderace, if it's, like, a... It, 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 Pyro Ball, and that's really strong, and Valiance doesn't have like a super great switch in, other than like potentially Flash Fire Serilege, but then he doesn't have the the weak armor, which is what really gets Serilege going to like fully win a game. So I don't know if uh, Valiance is going to want to run that. So Pyro Ball could potentially be very, very scary from Sunnyside. Um, Thunder Asterion, I believe, gets access to Psychic, so you know, it could be very scary against the uh, Great Tusk. Obviously, you got to be worried about a Volt Absorb Lantern as well. Uh, and then obviously, you know, you got to talk about the two MVPs of Sunnyside's team, this, the Vile Plume and the Hoopa Unbound. There's not a great Hoopa Unbound switch in, you know, uh, Psychic type moves really do a number on Vancouver. So um, he's going to have to try and find a way to work around that, or else Hoopa Unbound's just going to keep clicking Psychic moves until it eventually wins the game. And Vancouver's going to be able to do nothing about it. And Vile Plume, you know, it could click Toxic, it could click Leech Seed. Vancouver is going to, whether it's like with Substitute or Taunt, I think Taunt is probably better in the long run. Something along those lines. He's going to have to try and, you know, stop Sunnyside from just sitting there like she likes to do with all her Pokemon. But overall, I do think, you know, the offensive pressure through Sarah Ledge, through like potentially set up Hydrapple, through like maybe Specs Enamorous, through like Battle Bond Greninja, potentially Bulk Up Great Tusk, potentially Shift Gear, you know, all these set up, different setup options, I think are going to end up being too much for Sunnyside. Her, her, team is finally probably is finally going to break this week in my opinion just because Val valence has so many different options to get you know his stats up and break through the, the pure fat that sunnyside is gonna be going for i i tend to agree with you obviously there's also an out of game factor of i think vancouver's what 3-0 against sunnyside so if that can get into their head um i might see see some over prep on sunnyside's part just to try and overthink things where Vancouver will just go with the simple answer and it might just be the surprise factor that might get them. So, but otherwise, Sunny, you know, Mug's been playing a great, great game so far. It's been four O's across the board. You know, it's been just nothing but fat mons, fat mons winning the day. Vileplume being an MVP with what? It's the number three rank. Who would have thought Vileplume being the third kill leader is absolutely insane. Um, but in terms of just, you know, play style, I can see just it, it's going to be come down to simplicity on Vancouver's side with the setup versus um, uh, Sunnyside's being able to counter that setup at the same time while also being able to just knock out the Mons. It's going to be a tough matchup. I'm leaning towards about a 70-30 in favor of Vancouver, Ben. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards somewhere around there. But because Sunnyside's doing so well, I don't want to disrespect her. <laughs> I'm going to go 65-35 in favor of Vancouver. And we'll move on to the next game. All right, we got the Luscious Law Ponies versus the Logoless Sawdust Chimps. Um, space as well. It was a bit of a mishap on yeah. the... On the on, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was the Photoshop mishap. We'll, we'll fix it next time. <laughs> Raven shouts out to you. Sorry. Raven shouts out. I don't know if we... I don't know if we're going to do this thing where we pretend a game hasn't happened yet this one has happened this is the only game that's happened so far this week so i think uh 
I, I can speculate on who's good. I think Latios is okay this match. Obviously, you got to be worried about Grimmsnarl. Uh, Grimmsnarl usually doesn't have moves, so it can still, you know, do stuff. I think Kiram is okay. I think uh, Dedun Sparse is pretty good. I think Glastrier on Lopunny's side is pretty good. And uh, I think I'll... And I think Azumarill also has a pretty good matchup. It can kind of just click, play rough. And uh, the Steel type is weak to water, so there's that as well. And obviously, uh, like... Uh, the Boulder is also weak to uh, Water, and uh, Tentacruel doesn't really want to come in on those moves. It'll do a good chunk if it's, like, banded. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. What do you think, Syracuse? I mean, like you said before, match has already happened, so it's hard to kind yeah. of give some input. But, um, one, you know, one thing to comment about is uh, just, like, synergy-wise on, on the teams. I Obviously, uh, the slow king kiram synergy is all is always going to be tried and true or slow king with any kind of ice, uh, ice sweeper is tried and true um i feel like they've been getting very good value out of uh out of the mons they need to get value for in terms of sweeping wise i really like the this uh the terrors on sawdust chimps i mean i feel like they've been using well i mean obviously except for terra hippotas but you know it's an it's a nine mon team just ignore that last one but, yeah hey, we'll, we'll... <laughs> probably you know stop there yeah. i will say pay attention that low doesn't have a ghost type unless it tears yeah. the cheek tears the glass rear and we'll leave it at that amen all right the tennessee tyranitars versus the moochin embors so this is a really interesting one uh these two are both uh you know friends of orange they're both uh they both know each other um so, I will say Iron Bundle looks really, really good here. You know, the freeze dry seem really free, and Tinkaton has to come in on those, but uh, Tinkaton's going to have to be a lot of spadef to take the Hydro Pumps as well. Um, but I don't know exactly what set Embors is going to be running, because I'm assuming it's going to be something unconventional, like always. That's kind of like what he likes to roll with. And I think Terrapagos looks really devastating here. Really, there's no ghost. Uh, the Meloetta might be Terra Ghost. It might have to be in order to try and deal with this Terrapagos. But I imagine it'll have another move that could hit it. And I think if it just starts Calm Minding, this Terrapagos could get really, really out of hand for Moochin. And pick up a bunch of other kills and continue to climb the leaderboard as uh, the top kill leader. Um, obviously Mew could be anything. I imagine it might have Ice Coverage for Landorus, Psychic Coverage for Conk, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe set up some hazards because the removal is like more Pico. That could also be good. Like get the rocks up with that thing, so Tinkaton can open up its move slots to potentially deal with like a with a bundle with like Thunder Wave while also having a like have a, like a Gigaton. Well, maybe also carrying Ice Hammer from Landorus if you're Shookaberry. So something like that could be kind of cool. Um, Rotom Wash is a pretty decent Landorus answer to also. Uh, on Embor's side, I think, like, Meloetta is actually kind of good this matchup. If you Terra Ghost it, obviously you have to deal with the um, Meowscarada, which isn't very good. Maybe you end up being Colber Meloetta. But if you're, like, a Calm Mindset or some setup Meloetta, it could potentially get out of hand for the Tyranitars. Unless their uh, Okie Dogie is, like, Terra Dark, but I still think you could run, like, Fairy Coverage. For the sweeping potential, the Fairy is probably better, but I think you might need to be Ghost just to not get absolutely owned by Terrapagos. So we'll have to see, uh, from that perspective, what happens. Um, I think, like, you know, Dragology has a pretty hard time against, um, Mello against Tinkaton. Uh, it gets both its stab and immunized, so it'll be really difficult to uh, bring it and for that to work out. I don't remember if Dragali gets Earth Power. I don't think it does, but maybe this generation it got it. Uh, Hisui Lilligan could be interesting, but you know Okie Dogi is here. I think Okie Dogi will take a hit at plus one and then like come really close to killing it or kill it back with a poison move. So that would be really really like a difficult situation. I think I'm like. Definitely leaning into Tyranitar's favor, looking at the matchup. I think, you know, everything's kind of looking their way. The uh, Meowskirata also doesn't really have a switch in for the knockoffs. The knockoffs are going to be really devastating for uh, Muchin to take. He's going to have to go to, like, Conk 
or like lose his item, and he's gonna be losing his items, or he's gonna have to go to like Suicune, but Suicune's weak to the grass move, so you know, it's just not a great situation all around for them. What do you think, Syracuse? So earlier this season, I actually got to play around a lot with uh, Munch and Embor's team when I was helping Mock with uh, Vancouver, and I really like this team. It's a really fun team to use and make a lot of creative sets with it. Um, it's a lot of setup sets as well. Obviously, you got Lil uh, Lilligant and you know Calmine Suicune. Um, the only rapid rapid spinner i think is only is uh is is the uh brain turned off there for a second is the uh, more pico um more pico knockoffs are kind of fun to use but otherwise it's it's a very offensive heavy setup team like you said the the iron bundle could be fun to use but the big thing i see on tennessee's team is the trapagos as well as the uh the uh dragonite they pair very well together with both having similar abilities, obviously, um, in terms of being able to take a hit and then revenge kill back. I pretty much almost everything in Titar's favor in terms of being able to counter. Like you said, the biggest thing we're going to see for uh, the Embors is what the value that Iron Bundle can get. If Iron Bundle can either sweep or get two or three mons before it goes down, it can tilt the sides. But otherwise, I see Titar having a very favorable matchup. Yeah, yeah. Bundle has a massive like a really good matchup here it might be like a salt vest okie dokie to deal with that or something but uh it, it's not enough to stop the tyranitars from having like a 70 30 advantage in my opinion i agree i think i'll probably go right around the same thing i think 65 35 for me yeah in favor of the t-tars all right and with that we're gonna go to our next game the warchester whoopers versus the abbotsford agrons so this is a really interesting game. I think this is a Spectrier game, if I'm looking at it. Spectrier kind of owns Whoopers. I think almost everything gets 2 a KO'd by Shadow Ball. And the one thing that doesn't, their assist, is quad weak to the Draining Kiss. The, the thing always runs. And it also outspeeds everything, I think. So I think we're going to need to see an Assault Vest of some kind if we don't want to get hard swept by, by Spectrier. Because I think that thing has a really dominant matchup here. Maybe a Raquinid Assault Vest is how you end up dealing with it. I think if you're... Because the Raquinid does have a really high Spadef stat. If you're a uh, Assault Vest or Raquinid with like Liquidation and Leech Life, you can probably take like one hit from Samurott and like kill it with Leech Life. And you can also deal with uh, the the um, Spectrier. And you can also kind of deal with the Heatran. And maybe even like a Non-Terra uh, Arbeliva or Espeon as well. So uh, I think that's actually a really valid uh, bring here, is that um, Araquanid uh, Assault Vest Edition, and I think it also gets Giga Drain, and that could hit Quag as well. So I like that set a lot. Uh, but that being said, it's just way easier for Agrons, I think, in terms of, like, his Spiker is also a super, hits super effectively hit the opponent's Rapid Spinner in Dawn Fan, so you can't really bring it in on the Spiker, so you're going to have a difficult time getting rid of those Spikes. Um, Spectrier, like I said, just at any moment could really, like, get it rolling, because, like, one kill, like, if it gets one pick and gets the plus one special attack, you really don't have anything that you want to take the hit. Uh, in terms of taking Magma Storms, you're gonna have to tear out water your Magna Zone, in my opinion, because if you, if your Araquanid comes in on the Magma Storm and starts getting that chip, I think Araquanid's, like, literally your key, uh, switch in to Spectrier, so if you don't have that, you're in a really precarious situation. Iron Moth is, like, decent here, but, you know, Heatran has that Flash Fire, so it can't really, uh... Actually, Iron, Iron Moth gets stonewalled by Heatran, I think. Um, and I haven't even talked about Sneasler, who, you know, can hit really, really hard on Enamorous and Roaring Moon. Obviously, Skarm is there, but I think, like, Heatran's kind of a free switch on Skarm, and then you're gonna have to take a Magma Storm after that, and something's gonna have to take the chip. I think this is a pretty, pretty devastating matchup for, uh the whoopers all things considered if he gets one dragon dance with roaring moon and it's like eq plus knockoff um maybe but obviously the quagsire is here so it's going to be unaware quagsire so you're gonna have to hope quag doesn't come but i imagine it will uh to deal just with a uh, roaring moon like that and also uh, like a terra bug trap inch could come with first impression to just straight up kill the roaring moon if it really needed to so I'm heavily leaning towards Agrons here. I think Spectre is really good. I think Heatran's really good. I think, you know, Quag has its place. I think uh, Samurott 
can do stuff, and I think Sneasler also has some good stuff. Good stuff it could do. So uh, that that's why I'm leaning in favor of the Agrons. What do you think? So uh, just look at the team wise. Agron has a top heavier team with a lot harder hitters versus Worcester having a lot of good mons, but I feel like it has the it's unbalanced in terms of like the amount of hard heavy hitters. Like these are Worcester Wooper has a team that you can bring any of these mons any of these weeks versus like a lot of teams you'll see like eight or nine mon teams and they'll have one or two like 10 cost mons. But I feel like the heavy hitters in Abbotsford are just going to cause Worcester to just not have the right answers for it. Um, you know, between the Sneasler, the Spectrier, you know, getting the spikes up with uh, Hammerot, it's it's going to be a tough matchup. Plus, obviously, um, like you said, the Magma Storms are going to be a rough switch in because you're going to have to somehow get the Magna Zone to probably swap in after something's been killed to Terra Water because it's not going to be able to just immediately swap in and take a, a Magma Storm. So. I'm I'm leaning in the same favor as you probably. I'm gonna go probably 70-30, Ben. I'm going 80-20. I think Agrons has this one pretty handily. Uh I will say it'd be interesting if he has the Terra Water and can magnet pull the Heatran in order to um like terra blast it to death. Th like there's a line for sure for the whoopers, but I think it's heavily in favor of the Agrons. And he'll climb his way up to two and two. Alright. We're ready for the next game. The Norwalk Neuvruns versus the Crown Point Titans. Um, so this is a pretty pretty interesting matchup that we have here. Someone's got to someone's got to win eventually. Yeah. Between these 0 and three teams. So I imagine Zorwark Hisui is going to come just because if it it does it forces uh, Annihilate to not run its conventional set which is just Drain Punch Rage Fist bulk up like fourth move either Taunt or Encore you can't do that because Horwark is immune to both of the moves you're running so I still think it could be bulk up just because setup is so good against Crown Points of Titans and I do think Annihilate will still come just because it's the immunity to Ursa Luna and it's pretty good into Ursa Luna because it outspeeds and it can drain punch and get its health back if he does go for like the headlong rush. Um, but maybe it'll be like a, the fourth move is, um, uh, I don't know, probably Throat Trop is what dark move Annihilate gets. I know it doesn't get knocked off. But um I think like Primarina is not the greatest in this matchup because of things like Glow King and Iron Hands. You know, it can hit Iron Hands, but it'll die pretty fast right back. I think Raging Bolt, like Calm Mind, is actually kind of good here. But you gotta uh, remember that Satitan is here and uh, can be very, very threatening. In fact, I think if Satitan still had its Terra, it would straight up win. But because it doesn't... It's a little bit more difficult. Avalog's probably going to have to come to deal with the Satitan, I imagine. I mean, Avalog's coming every week because it's the Terra Captain anyways, right? But, um, and there's no other Terra Captain on the Norwalk and Wavern side. But, um, I am, uh, thinking, like, you know, Jirachi could be a Wish Passer. But I don't really know, uh, what exactly that does for them. I think, like, Glow King could be a T-Spiker. Because, the like, if Venusaur absorbs... You could just start going for the uh, the psychic moves, and uh, like it, it would be very difficult for uh, them to come in on the glow king like that. Uh, that's why t t glow king such a good t spiker is that it can punish poisons for coming in directly on it to absorb the t spikes. Uh, Bramblegast, I don't think is the best here. Again, walled pretty hard by Avalug. If Gliscor is defensive, it walls it too. Gliscor actually has a pretty it's a matchup here other than Satitan, so I think Satitan is going to have to come. I think Satitan is like a win condition here, but without the Terra, it's much, much worse. Um, Diancie has a pretty good shot at doing something. I think Terra Steel Diancie with like the Calm Mind Draining Kiss stuff plus Earth Power. That could be really, really devastating. Um, the win con for Noivern, I don't really see it other than like Raging Bolt. But I fear that Raging Bolt might not be able to, um, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see if Ursa Luna tries to cre speed creep zero speed Raging Bolt, or if Raging Bolt tries to speed creep a speed creeping Ursa Luna. And Raging Bolt also has to deal with Satitan, although now that Satitan's not Terra, it can just get Thunderclapped. So I think it'll come down to like Thunderclaps, and also like Iron Hands, if Iron Hands is a Salt Vest, it could also kind of deal with Raging Bolt. Um... 
I'm going to lean 55-45 in crown points favor, I think. But I'm definitely not fully like sure of that. What do you think, Syracuse? So it's almost the biggest thing looking at crown points Titan teams is how fat and bulky it is. And that's going to be the biggest issue Norwalk has is uh, can you punch through that? Or can you eliminate the things that can do damage? The The biggest choke point I see on the crown points of Titans is they don't have a lot of you know heavy hitters, no big damage dealers. Um, you know, if the Satite, like we keep saying, if the Satite was Terra, you could get the Slush Ross off, it'd be nasty. But the both these teams have like Terras that are just like you wish you wish it was almost something else. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing working against them. Um, I feel like if Norwalk can get creative or find some things to set up on or be able to break through the wall, they might be able to get it. It's going to be a tough matchup either way, but, um, I think I'll get, I think it's going to be close either way. I'm going to lean more towards Norwalk cause just cause from the experience wise and stuff like that, I'll probably go 55, 45. All right, I think with that, we can move on to the next game. The Pittsburgh Scissors versus the Lion City Leech Life. So this is a really, really cool one, uh, I suppose. Uh, Pittsburgh actually has one of the... Uh... Hold on, let me check out how this works. I think it's just normal moves, right? Yeah, has one of the decent air answers to uh, Ursula Blood Moon and Orthworm because it resists the Blood Moon and uh, the Earth Powers are immune because of Man Eater. I believe Mind's Eye doesn't work so that Earth Power would go through Man Eater. Uh, obviously, don't because I was wrong. I forgot about Mold Break Run Extra Drill Week 1, but I'm saying it again here. I'm pretty sure Earthworm is pretty good for that. Other than the fact Blood Moon probably does 60, because Earthworm Spit F is pretty bad. <laughs> but other than that, you know, uh, there's some Spit F mons here that can potentially take the Blood Moons, like AV Torn, or like Spit F Florges, or AV Mock. But I don't really know how well they're going to be taking them. And I think if this is a Calm Mind Blood Moon, uh, Pittsburgh could be in for a world of hurt. A really, really bad world of hurt. Like a Max HP, Max Defense, Calm Mind, Moonlight, uh earth power uh like hyper voice i don't even know if you need blood moon but probably blood moon is the fourth move and you can just earth power the other turns i think that could be really really devastating for pittsburgh no one really runs that anymore but that it was the standard set on ladder i think people forgot and it's still really really good and really really threatening um i think ogre pond wellspring can kind of just click uh Ivy Cudgel, there is Tauros, and that will intimidate, so there's that at least. But the devastating thing about Ogre Pond Wellspring is that it has the grass coverage too for your like water resist, right? And there's no grass type on this team unless you Terra Grass your muck. So maybe this Tauros will try and get in and then Terra Grass to deal with the uh, Ivy Cudgeler. That might be the best option they have, if I'm being honest. Um, in terms of Terra Captains on Lion City Leech Life's side... I think Terra Electric Vicavolt could end up being really, really good. The Mudsdale isn't like the greatest ground in the world. You know, if you click the, the bug move into it, it'll probably do 45 to 50% because Vicavolt is so strong. So you're uh, really like dealing with a situation where you can do some devastating damage. Uh, I think Hydreigon is pretty decent this matchup uh, because of its... Uh, Dark coverage for Deoxys and it's Dragon coverage for Gouging Fire. You gotta worry about the floor just though. But floor just does just kind of invite in Golden Go, and then Golden Go can kind of do stuff from there. Like either set up nasty plots, and then that puts Pittsburgh on the back foot. I think the the offensive pressure from Leech Life is just way higher. Uh, Pittsburgh's team, it, we found out so far, is kind of just a little too passive. Doesn't really have the damage output it would need to put out to really uh, threaten the opponent. And Pittsburgh doesn't even have the, the hazard staking, stacking uh, capabilities to punish uh, the fact that Leech Life's uh, spinner is Fortress. So I, I do think this is for sure in Leech Life's favor. I'm probably going to go 60-40 in, in terms of what I feel for them. Um, similar to similar thought process, I see a lot of vests in Pittsburgh's future. Um, a, lot of, a lot of special attackers in the Leech, Leech Life side um, with really the only really physical hard hitters are going to be like ogre pond which just wants to click ivy cudgel and freely can click ig cudgel that 
but or the pert, but you know, a lot of times you're not trying to go full offensive pert. Um, Pittsburgh just has kind of weird, kind of like like you said, passive. A lot of big tanky mons, regenerators, and stuff like that. But there's nothing really to like put that pressure on. Um, you have the gouging fire, but you want gouging fire to be your win con, so you really can't come out too early. Or the Porion Z, you know, it's it's can try and put a little pressure on, but I don't think it's it's exactly what's needed. I see Leech Life as long, uh, it's almost kind of like his to lose somewhat. I'll probably go something similar. I'm, I'm going to go probably 70-30 in favor of the Leech, Leon, Lion City Leech Life. Yep. That's it. And I believe that might be the last one. That's All it. Right. So uh, with that, thank you for watching Pickums. We are uh, moving into week four. Let's uh, keep going strong halfway through the season of PBO. Peace out. See ya.